Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a quick and easy problem. Maybe not that quick, but it's definitely easy. I like these types of problems, especially for beginners. These problems are really good. If you're new to complex numbers, you can definitely go ahead and watch my lecture videos. I go over the basics of complex numbers. So this problem is can be solved actually in two different ways, which is really what's nice about it. I don't know if there's a third way to do it. If you do know of an alternative method, please let us know in the comment section down below. But I'm gonna go ahead and present two solutions, okay? Which is nice because that's a general strategy for these kinds of problems, even though these, this may not always be applicable, but I think in most cases, it should be applicable. I was thinking about what happens if absolute value is involved? Can we still use the method, which is the second method, by the way? I'm first gonna give you the standard method, the, which is the first method. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into the video. So the first method for this problem is gonna involve the name of this channel. That's why I name it cha this channel that way, A plus BI, right? I think this is pretty unique. I don't. I do not know of any other channel that focuses on complex numbers. If you do know, please let us know, or maybe don't let us know. No competition, right? Anyways, competition is good, but I think uh, there are no other channels like this one. Are there? Okay. Anyways, so we're gonna go ahead and call Z a plus b i because that's what a complex number is, and this implies that the conjugate of the, the complex conjugate is basically defined as the unique complex number that gives you a real number when multiplied by and added to a complex number. <laughs> I don't know if that made sense. So if you have a Z and Z bar, which is the complex conjugate, you add them up or you multiply them. In both cases, you do get a real answer. And that number is unique, right? Isn't it? I mean, you can try multiples of the conjugate, but it won't give you a real number when you add it. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how this proceeds. If z is a plus bi, how do you find the z bar or the conjugate of z? You just negate or change the sign of the imaginary part, which is b, okay? a and b are real numbers, remember that. i is a very special number. Some people called it imaginary. That's probably where it comes from. But I is very real. Well, we use it all the time. Physicians or is it physicists? Yeah. I mean, I think physicians use it too anyways. It's used a lot, basically. And I is the number whose square equals negative 1. I guess that's the best definition. I squared equals negative 1. That's it. There you go. But some people call it the square root of negative 1. But that's like the square root. If you are talking about the principal square root, yes. But a complex number has two square roots. Anyway, I talk a lot. Let's get into the video. <laughs> Let's plug it in. We have Z here. So it's going to be A plus BI. Please, notability, stop acting weird. I don't know. It's probably static. Anyway, so... On the right-hand side, we have Z bar. So let's go ahead and replace it with A minus BI. And then that'll give us hopefully something good, right? Let's go ahead and distribute and that should give us something good. We get A plus BI from one and then this is AI and then when you multiply these two things that's going to give you a BI squared or just minus B because remember I squared is negative one, right? Okay, awesome. Now on the right hand side we're just going to negate everything inside the parentheses and now let's go ahead and put these together and put these together in other words real real and imaginary imaginary together like this and then we have this you don't have to put the one minus a in parentheses i i hope you can clearly see that this is the real part and that's the real part so they should be equal in other words a minus b is equal to one minus a from here you get a bunch of different versions of this equation, but the second equation is actually more significant. The imaginary parts A plus B equals B. Wow, that was nice, because what happens? B cancels out. It's not like division, so you don't have to be careful like B, what if B is zero? It still cancels out, because we're subtracting it from both sides. And from here we get A equals zero, 
which you can substitute here or if you want to uh, I guess from here we get b equals negative 1 to keep a long story short right that's easy you can do it solving a system of equations okay great this is what's nice about the first method because it's pretty standard applies to many different situations almost all problems of this type where you are looking for z the unknown but you're also given a bunch of other things like z bar maybe even the absolute value of z what will be some exceptions i don't know maybe there are some scenarios where you can't use this method uh, possibly i do not know though anyways a equals zero b equals negative one implies that our complex number z is a plus b i that means uh, no real part but only the imaginary part and that is negative one i or i can write it as negative i hmm, interesting such a simple solution to this problem let's go ahead and take a look at the second method and then we will talk about, uh, I don't know, something. <laughs> okay, so the second method is actually also really cool. And I don't know if it applies to every scenario, but, mm, you know, uh, it applies at, uh, in this case at least. So here's how it works. Since we have Z and Z bar in the same equation, uh, why don't we use the properties of conjugates? What are properties of conjugates? Okay, let's talk about it briefly. If you have uh, two complex numbers being added and you conjugate them, then it's the same thing as conjugating those two numbers separately and then adding them. So the sum of the conjugates is the conjugate of the sum. In other words, kind of like logs, but it's plus to plus. And the same thing works for multiplication. I believe also for division, right? And there's another rule which is nice. If you take a complex number and conjugate it twice, you get the original number. It's kind of like the reciprocal of the reciprocal. Okay, great. So if you apply these properties uh, and division should work too, just make sure the denominator is never zero because division by zero is unlike zero to the power zero, which is one, by the way, it can't be done. It's not allowed. 0 to the power 0 is allowed, and many people think it's 1, and I'm one of them. Anyways, I made a separate video about that. That's a different story. Let's get to work. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this because I'll work in this area. Now we're going to go ahead and conjugate both sides, and that will give us our second equation, which is what we need. Now I'm going to go ahead and conjugate the sum first. That's going to give me 1 minus i. And you can think about it this way too. What's the conjugate of 1 plus i? 1 minus i. What is the conjugate of z? z bar. What's the conjugate of 1? 1, because it's a real number. And minus the z bar, by the way, addition and subtraction both work, will be z. Great. I also have the original equation right here. Remember, before I conjugated it, you were able to see it. Now we have the system of equations, which we should be able to solve easily. I don't know the best way to do it, but I probably would go by isolating one of these, maybe isolate z from the second equation. I mean the first equation, let's call this first and that's called the second. From the first one, I'm gonna isolate z. I'm gonna write it as one minus, one minus i times z bar. Notice that this I put on the right hand side and I brought the z over here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in here. One plus i multiply by z, which is one minus, one minus i times z bar. And then that is z. And that is equal to 1 minus z bar. I'm going to go ahead and distribute this. 1 plus i times 1 minus. I'm going to go ahead and multiply these first. That's going to give me 2 from sum of 2 squares. Z bar, you see? It's pretty simple this way too. Now let's go ahead and put the uh, first cancel out the 1s. And then put the z bars together. You're going to get a z bar here and an i here. So z bar is i. Which means the conjugate of z is i which means z is going to be the conjugate of the conjugate, which is the conjugate of i, which is negative i. And this gives us the same, exact same solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.